JMU gets a 12 seed. They'll take on the fifth seeded Wisconsin Badgers. It's Locked On Sunbelt. You are Locked On Sunbelt, your daily podcast on the Sunbelt Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Dave Schultz, Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. Today's episode brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. All right, we got uh, JMU in the NCAA tournament taking on Wisconsin. We'll get to that momentarily. Cajuns win again. I'm still not sure. I will say the bats are coming around, but boy, that pitching and defense uh, lacks a little something. Although uh, they did get a couple of guys finish up strong. I will say that. Uh, And then Coastal Carolina comes back all day long. JMU at least had two chances to win uh, the game and the series. And Coastal Carolina is really good. We'll go over all of the baseball. And I I know it doesn't compare to the Oklahoma 71 game winning streak. But that the Raging Cajuns have beaten South Alabama now 26 times in a row. And you know, South Alabama is generally one of the top teams in the Sun Belt. 26 times in a row. 82 series in a row for the Cajuns in the Sun Belt as well. That's impressive. Uh, all right. So let's talk JMU taking on a Wisconsin. So it was the second bracket, uh, right, announced. And they had done, I guess, the East first right they done the east first and jmu is 52 so these are all the i guess these are all done afterwards or these are all uh as of the games okay so i will admit that the uh, net rankings that i posted were before today's games before sunday's games i will say that okay so you got james madison 52 that did not move but you have a let's see where they put Duquesne because they got an 11 seed. I don't see them here right now. Hold on a second. Duquesne got an 11. Where did Duquesne go? All right. Missing Duquesne. Uh, And then who was the other team? UAB. UAB got a 12 seed. They're 104. And Duquesne, I thought they were in the 80s. They were. They were 83. So they're 80. So Duquesne is 80. They got an 11 seed. JMU is 52. I don't understand. <laughs> you know, I, we can use it as a guideline, but I was thinking, could JMU get like a, a 10 seed? And now this is why, and Virginia is another good example of it. I think Virginia's, let me see what Virginia's net is. Because when I tell you that, you know, group of five teams need like a 35 or higher. You need a 35 or higher to get in. Virginia's net was 54. And somehow they got an at-large berth. So we can complain all we want about the little guy uh, not getting their fair shake. But uh, it, it is what it is. So you got to make sure, you know, you're playing by their rules. You got to make sure you take advantage however you can take advantage. And JMU has been through that trying to schedule better, but it goes two ways, right? We did that whole scheduling thing and how you can be a two-bid league. And they're saying half of the league doesn't schedule very well. But again, that that takes two to tango. Why is someone, although maybe the Big 12 figured it out, ULM needs to play some better teams. So there, uh, and Georgia State, so their schedule uh, is not as bad as it is. And so it's it's not it's, it's not bad losses that people worry about, although that's bad too. It's the bad wins that doesn't help you. Anyway, we've been through that. Okay, so JMU's taking on uh, Wisconsin. The reaction, I think we heard like an audible groan uh, when Wisconsin got announced, they cheered, and then they had JMU, and I thought it was like, oh, thought we heard that. Uh, JMU, very excited. Uh, They're playing in Brooklyn, so that's fun. Going from Harrisonburg 
uh, to the Big Apple. All right, anybody go want to bring me back a hot pastrami sandwich, seedless rye, and spicy mustard, feel free. Uh, now, to sit here and tell you that I know anything about Wisconsin, I'm not sure I've seen 20 seconds of Wisconsin this year. Okay. So, uh, but we will go stereotype. Now, they just did beat Purdue. We know that. And they lost to Illinois. The thing about Wisconsin uh, in this, so I will take the uh, stereotype would be, you know, tough defense, good shooters, uh, but they don't necessarily score a lot and not necessarily uh, the most athletic of all teams, right? That's the stereotypical Wisconsin, you know, one or two really good players and then everybody else, a bunch of role players. So that would be the stereotypical Wisconsin. But if you if you look at their schedule, they went 22 and 13. The thing about them is, and we'll start, we won't even do preseason before, you know, before the Big Ten play. They didn't blow, they don't blow out a lot of people, and they don't get blown out all that often. Okay. They did have a stretch of four losses in a row at Nebraska. They lost to Purdue. They lost at Michigan, which is not a great loss, and they lost at Rutgers. They did get blown out at Rutgers by 22. But the other ones, Nebraska by eight, Purdue at home by six, uh, at Michigan by four, right? Then they get Ohio State at home and that four-game losing streak after that, they beat them by eight. They lose to Iowa by two, and and they get all kinds of different scores, right? They they beat Ohio State 62-54. They lose to Iowa 88-86. They beat Maryland 74-70, and then they lose at Indiana 74-70. So this will be a very interesting matchup. They do have another blowout on their hands. Uh, I think that was that in the first round of the uh, Big Ten tournament. They uh, beat Maryland 87-56. But Northwestern, they beat by nine in the tournament. They beat Purdue by one in the tournament. And they beat Illinois by six in the tournament. So... Uh, and they can play either way, right? You know, they scored 87 and lost. Uh, they score, let's figure this out. They score 74, 75 points a ball game, smack dab in the middle of the country, 161st, and they allow 70 points. All right, my thing was for JMU to pull this off, not wanting to play like a Kentucky that may have not necessarily better defensive athletes, but um more athletes than JMU might have or a Florida or a Kansas type of deal uh although poor kid from Florida breaking his leg hopefully hopefully he gets better uh I mean you know sooner than later but obviously won't play uh this week in the NCAA tournament uh and so again until I hear differently and you know I think at JMU's got a shot. All right, let's. This is when I did it immediately. We did DraftKings, ESPN Bet, and FanDuel. All right, we went to all of them. And it was five and a half on DraftKings. ESPN Bet had it at four and a half. Then I went back to DraftKings. It was five. It was four and a half on uh, FanDuel as well. That was Wisconsin was favored. This is a 5-12 ball game where already the money is coming in on JMU. This is being recorded at 8.50, so almost four hours after the brackets were released. Let's check what it is, see if it's changed at all now. All right. By the way, the game time has come out. It is late Friday night. It is a 9.40 ball game. Good luck. That's going to start on time. Probably closer to 10-ish Eastern time, 9 o'clock. Uh, Central time. So it is a a late ball game. They will have to wait around all day long. Let's see if the line has changed at all. Still four and a half on uh, ESPN bet. Let's see our buddies at FanDuel. See if I have to sign back in. Uh, Uh, Nope. Good. All right. Well, they might be. Yeah, they're making me. If we have to do the whole. uh, No goodness. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to remember what what my uh, password was. Let me see if I can do it on the line here. I'm trying to do it on the computer, and I don't think that's working as fast. Let's see what we got here. I may have the, you know, 
eye scan on the iPhone. <laughs> Explore. Uh, let's see, all sports. Basketball, done. Oh, oh God, straight. Does not have it? I don't know, it's not, all right. No, it's doing this here, home. And Okay, maybe it wasn't that, okay. Let's try that again. Much easier. I'm where I need to be now. Okay. Um, what do we say it was? It was uh, four and a half on. It was four and a half on fan. Uh, it is four and a half on Fanduel. Yep. Still four and a half on Fanduel. All right. Uh, they didn't have the money line, but it was like a, a, a plus two hundred early on. I think JMU's got a shot, and then they play the winner of Duke and Vermont. I don't think Duke is – Duke is not what Duke used to be. I, you know, they're just not. They may be next year, but they're not this year. I think JMU has a shot of going to the Sweet 16. Now, they got to play well, right? They got to have all their guys show up. It can't be like TJ and uh, – or, uh, you know, Terrence Edwards and Noah Friedel carrying the load. All of them have to show up, including – uh, TJ Bickerstaff, including Jalen Carey, including uh, Xavier Brown, right? And it's going to be a team effort. All right. This, these games won't be easy. And don't, and don't think for a second, if somehow Vermont beats Duke, that's going to be easy, uh, maybe easier, <coughs> but that also will be a challenge. Don't get me started on Vermont. All right. Don't get me started on Vermont. So uh, I like where JMU is. We're trying to get a, a, a crossover show with the Wisconsin guys. If you go look online, the Wisconsin fandom does not like this matchup. They they they're like, whoa, one of the hottest team, if not the hottest team in America. What thirteen in a row, and you know, all kinds of streaks, and I've only lost three ball games. Uh, I am not sure that uh, uh, that this is going to go uh, Wisconsin's way. All right. I didn't hear anybody else. Uh, well, I guess one of the announcers did. Yeah, one of the Braxton. Was it Seth Davis said that? Someone else said it as well. Uh, but I'm liking I'm liking JMU uh, in this one. It's not quite as good as value as I was hoping for. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if this gets down to like three points. It's not a home game by any stretch of imagination. Both teams going to New York. And neither one, you know, all that close. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see. Uh, how that works out. All right, let's take a time out. We'll we'll preview this as much as we can. Uh, if the lockdown guys won't come on, we'll get some other uh, Wisconsin guests on. Uh, that is for sure. All right, let's take a time out. Uh, baseball, Cajuns get another series win inexplicably. Uh, Coastal Carolina rolls, Southern Miss rolls. We'll do it when we come back uh, right after this. Let me tell you about Nissan. This week's March Madness Bracket highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest, just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs. These guys were able to take it to the next level. The Utah State Aggies are obviously this week's Nissan Rogue. The team absolutely surprised us with an all-powerful performance against New Mexico, giving them their first outright Mountain West title in program history. They say, win life, go rogue, and that's exactly what the Aggies have done here. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. And Amazon Fire. Fire is your destination. Uh, Fire TV is your destination for sports. From live games to highlights to in-depth analysis, Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire Stick. They can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. I got it. You should too. 
Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, and the upcoming Major League Baseball season. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on TV. All right, Dave Schultz, locked on some about your team every day. All right, uh, baseball. We'll start with the Cajuns. <clears throat> I still don't know what to make of them. I really, I really don't. I've never heard of anything like this. 19 lineups and 19 ball games. Now, I will admit it's starting to come together. All right, it feels like uh, John Taylor uh, up front, Kyle DeBarge third, Amadi fourth, Connor Higgs after that, uh, and uh, Trey LaFleur, tough number nine hitter, not your typical uh, number nine hitter. The so bats, I will admit, the bats are coming around. The bats were not the problem uh, this week against Arkansas State. Uh, the pitching was a problem, and the starting pitching was a problem in, um, well, I would say all series long, but the best performance that the Cajuns got out of their starter was Carson Fluno on Sunday, and he was taken out after three innings and about 65 pitches. He'd given up a total of one earned run, which was a solo home run. All right, that's going to happen. But the other two runs were due to the poor Cajuns defense. This team gave up the two teams combined for five errors. Uh, it was a wacky ball game. The only time that the Cajuns had retired the uh, Arkansas State Red Wolves in order was in the ninth. Um, it's been quite the ride for uh, Jack Martinez. He has gone from a opening night starter on a Friday to midweek mop-up guy to throwing three and two-thirds innings of, I believe, shutout baseball on Sunday. He threw more innings than the starter, Carson Fluno. Go figure that out. On Saturday, Chase Morgan, who is your freshman Saturday night uh, opening weekend starting pitcher, is now closing out the games on Saturday. Crazy. Uh, Cajuns were down, uh, came back. I think they fell one run short on Friday before Arkansas State uh, blew it open. And the Cajuns actually had a shot uh, late Friday uh, to do some damage, lose 11 to 8. Come from behind yesterday, or uh, not yesterday, on Saturday, and win ball, that ball game late 7 to 6, and win Sunday's ball game 8 to 5. There again, their RPI has continued to skyrocket. I don't know what it'll be on Monday, but uh, you know, last Saturday we're talking about ten days ago before the Tulane game, it was two thirty six. Now it's seventy three, and I still don't. I I'm still not sure. I, I I'm still not sure about it. I'm really not. The defense was brutal. The uh, the uh, um, maybe some bad hops, but you know you're, they're having trouble standing up in the outfield. So they 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 have infielders playing outfield. And so we're supposed to uh, let them adjust. Well, you got infielders playing outfield and, you know, they got to get used to it. Well, why don't we have outfielders playing outfield, right? Um, so we'll see. I, I'm a skeptic. We'll put it that way. That, that's the perfect word right now. I'm a skeptic of Ragin's Cajun baseball for right now, okay? We'll see. Um, can't do anything but win the games that are in front of you. And uh, they're on a little bit of a streak, right? They've won four or five. Yeah. And no, four of six and uh, well, four of five and four of six uh, on the weekends. So that's pretty good because, you know, you lose that Sunday game to Tulane and you lose that Saturday ball game to Arkansas State and the season's look, losing is, is looking much different. So we shall see. Uh, meanwhile, let's check out some other ball games uh, in the Sun Belt. Uh, you had Southern Miss with a, a couple of controversial calls, I guess. Catcher's interference allowed the winning run to score on Saturday against, where are we here? Against uh, Marshall. 
in the 14th inning. And it's a little bit of anticlimactic when you're going over a review. And um, I, I guess it wasn't a nickel dimer call, but whatever. Uh, hold on. That was, it was two to one. They play, they play 14 innings on Saturday and 14 innings on Sunday. Oh my goodness. So a couple of two to one ball games for Southern Miss. I believe they swept Marshall. They did. They beat them eight to four in game one. Uh, uh, Let's see here. South Alabama was really started well. And then the rains came. They were up. South Alabama softball and baseball moved their games up to Friday at one. The softball game got stopped due to lightning with one out in the seventh inning. That game was flying by. It almost came back to hurt the Cajuns. The Cajuns were actually up in that one, and they won that ball game hanging on the next day, three to two. <coughs> it did not go that way for the baseball team. The baseball team came back. They were up three nothing, couldn't throw strikes. Uh, they lost on. Friday, eight to three. They lost on Saturday, 10 to seven. And then they lost on Sunday. Oh, I guess, oh, I'm sorry. Saturday, they had uh, two ball games. Saturday, they lost 10 to seven and 11 to one. Well, we'll see if Mark Alvey can turn that around because they were really off to a good start. You have to, I guess, slough it off, right? Um, can't do anything about it. Not really good uh, for South Alabama after a very promising start. All right, let's take a timeout. We'll come back. Coastal Carolina and James Madison had an absolute classic on Sunday. We'll do that when we come back uh, right after this. I tell you about LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. Gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker. 2.5 million small businesses are using LinkedIn for hiring. Post your job for free on linkedin.com slash lockdown college. That's linkedin.com slash lockdown college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. And Lafayette Travel. Escape to Lafayette, Louisiana, the happiest city in America, where every visit is uniquely seasoned with unforgettable experiences. Savor world class cuisine, including mouth watering boudin, savory gumbo, and piping hot crawfish seasoned to perfection. Experience lively festivals that celebrate Lafayette's one of a kind heritage. Explore magnificent trails that lead you to our through our rich cultural history and breathtaking natural beauty. Discover the untouched purity of our cypress and Tupelo swamps where you can paddle past nesting birds and sunbathing alligators. Immerse yourself in the vibrant rhythms of Cajun and Zydeco music that can be heard any night of the week. Whether your passion is for their rich cultural history, the bustling culinary scene, or the distinctive blend of Cajun and Zydeco music, the happiest city in America has something for everyone. Start planning your adventure at Lafayette travel.com slash season. All right, got to clear the throat. I don't know what's going on. All right, Dave Schultz, Locked on Sunbelt, your team every day. Let's talk Coastal Carolina baseball. This is the two top teams in the... Uh, two top teams on the Warren Nolan uh, list. Let me see. I had that here. Let's see where they are as of right now. Because it was like 10 and 17 earlier this week. Let's see where we are right now. After Coastal takes two out of three. Well, James Madison actually is ninth. They moved up, oddly enough. And Coastal Carolina, they moved up as well. They are 14th. So, 
The Sun Belt in baseball already has two teams in the top 20 uh, in uh, in WarnNolan.com, at least in Warren Nolan's RPI. All right. Uh, this was a series that JMU is going to wish they had over again. So first game on Friday, Coastal beats him. Run rule, uh, 12 to 1. I think they hit two grand slams in the same inning. And uh, Blake Barthol uh, had five runs batted in, including a grand slam. He is your early candidate for Sunbelt Player of the Year. He is off to a tremendous start. Saturday, JMU comes back, beats Coastal 7 to 4. All right. So it's, we're all evened up. This was a heck of a ball game. On Sunday, JMU has a 6-3 lead. They've done a good job of controlling the Coastal Carolina at bats, bats into the ninth inning. And in the ninth inning, Coastal Carolina scores three runs to tie it up. All right, JMU hits a two-run home run to take a 8-6 to six lead in the 11th inning. Ball game, right? No. <coughs> Excuse me. Two runs come in for Coastal Carolina in the 11th inning. Tie this ball game up. So James Madison could have won it in the ninth. They could have won it in the 11th. They scored two in the 13th. James Madison scored two in the 13th to make it 10 to 8. Born with a bases loaded double to end the ball game. Going from up 10-8 to down 11-10. That's a rough game for James Madison. Talk about trying to slough one off. That one's going to leave a mark. That's a great win by Coastal Carolina. I mean, they were down 2-1. to one. It was tied at 3. They were actually, to be honest with you, they're down 2-1, to 3-1, to 3-3. One, three to one, three, three, Five three six three tied at six eight six uh eight eight ten eight and they win the ball game eleven to ten. That's quite the win. I'm not sure in baseball, at least not college baseball, can it propel you to huge momentums because you usually have a day off. Let's see the next time uh, they play a ball game. You know, in the in the majors, you can use that momentum. Even if you have like one day off, let's see when they play again. Uh, uh, who we're looking for? Coastal Carolina. JMU plays Maryland, so they'll get up for that quickly. That's on Tuesday. Coastal Carolina is at NC State, so they'll carry that in as well on Tuesday. South Alabama better get jacked up. They get Auburn on Tuesday. Um. And let's see if there's any good. You get James Madison hosting Texas State. That's a good one. Coastal Carolina going to App State. That's a good one. Georgia Southern welcoming in Southern Miss. That's a good one. And you got the battle for the belt, if you will. South Alabama going to Troy. Cajuns hosting Old Dominion. That's on uh, the weekend. All right, quickly. I don't know if we'll be able to do the uh, whole series. But on Sunday, let's see. We told you uh, Coastal beat James Madison. Uh, Georgia Southern took down Old Dominion. I think they salvaged the final game of that series. Old Dominion um, kind of off to a rough start, but they took two out of three from Georgia Southern. That's nice. Texas State, let's see here. They beat App on Sat on Friday, 3-2. to two. Beat them on uh, Saturday, 17-7. to seven. And App State salvages the third game of the series, 3-2. to two. All right. Uh, again, uh, Troy and ULM six to four on Saturday. It looks like they played two games. They split on Saturday. ULM won eight to four and Troy took the first game on Friday. A lot of teams moved up their games because of the rain that was coming through the South, both on Saturday and on Sunday, as it turned out. Uh, and I think, and we told you Southern Miss and Marshall. So we told you that. All right. So quickly, let's look at the standings. Uh, Southern Miss and Georgia state. Uh, they sweep. They're both three and zero. Coastal, Troy, Old Dominion, the Cajuns, the Bobcats, all two and one. App State, James Madison, ULM, Arkansas State, and Georgia Southern, one and two, and South Alabama and Marshall, zero oh, and a uh, three. All right, let's quickly. I don't know if we got the we got the stats. Let me see. It's quick. Let's see where looks 
Blake Barthol because I thought I heard I thought I heard some ridiculous numbers from him early on. Let's see where these games are through. So these are heading into the weekend. So this will not include uh, the weekend. Coastal Carolina leading the conference in batting, and I don't think it went down uh, three nineteen. <clears throat> Let's see if we got here uh, individuals. Uh, you got some other guys that are having uh, good years. Blake Barthol, 371, 10 home runs, 26 RBIs. Got a slugging percentage of 952 and an on-base percentage of 530. It's an OPS of 1480. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. You do have some other guys having some uh, having some good, good seasons. Easton Winfield out of ULM, six home runs, but only 15 RBIs. Uh, Will Butcher of Troy, seven home runs, 34 runs batted in. I think, didn't he have like, was it 17 RBIs in a week? <clears throat> or the weekend, the first weekend? He had some ridiculous number on the first weekend. Seven uh, home runs on the season. Uh, he's hitting 385. And let's see here. Uh, Coleman Calabrese for JMU with uh, six home runs. But right now, Blake Barthol, not the necessarily the leading hitter, but he leads in home runs. The only one who's got double digits. And second in RBIs to Butcher's 34. He's got 26. That looks like that's the case. All right. Watch out for the Cajuns, Kyle DeBarge. He's on a 10-game hitting streak. He started out really slowly, four for 28. But he's on a 10-game hitting streak, and he's hit um, 12 out of his last uh, 13. Let me see if we find the Kyle DeBarge. He's only hitting like three-something. And this is between this is heading into Friday. So this didn't even include this didn't even include Blake Barthol's weekend, just to make sure we understand that. Where is I do not see the barge. He's playing every game. I haven't, I don't, I don't, I don't see him. Anyway, all right. He's he's he was hitting around uh 300. I don't I don't know why I, he is missing. Or I am just not uh oh there he is. Kyle DeBarge was hitting 294. Six home runs, 18 runs batted in. Uh, I believe he hit two home runs, so that gives him eight home runs and probably knocked in three or four, so he's in the 20s RBIs. He's having a good season, all right, uh, after a slow start. All right, thanks so much for tuning in. Again, we'll do much more baseball and, of course, JMU and Wisconsin basketball. We get to preview that all week as they don't play until late on Friday. So we'll uh, work to get on some guests uh, to preview that. All right. Thanks so much for tuning in to Lockdown Sunbelt, your team every day. I'm your host, Dave Schultz. Have a great weekend, everybody. And we'll talk to you again on Tuesday.